in. That means we can start any time now. Uh, hey guys, uh, this is another episode of uh, Those Muckrakers. I'm Peter. And I'm Pat. And uh, today in the headlines we have uh, tariffs. Are they good? Putin has a new missile that can reach the USA. The doomsday clock moves closer to midnight. And more Russian attacks in London. I don't know why the doomsday clock's moving closer to midnight. Didn't you hear that good old President Trump is going to go talk to uh, Kim Jong-un and convince him not to nuke America? Now, why was he even going to nuke America in the first place? Who cares? Let's not pay attention to that. He's not going to anymore, thanks to our um, stable genius president. Do you have some headlines for us, or are you just going to go straight into it there? Uh, I'm just going straight into it there. I I'm going off of the headlines that you were throwing out. All right, let's talk about tariffs for a minute. Are they tariffs or tariffs, first of all? I've been tariffs. calling them both, yeah. I was, like, the, tariffs. I was like, the tariffs, and him was like, what? I'm like, you know, the things they put. Uh, so we're putting new protective tariffs on steel. We, by we, I mean uh, Trump, and only Trump, put new protective yeah. tariffs on steel and uh, aluminum to, uh, I guess, uh, protect uh, he, uh, America. He, he's, well... By what he claims, but we all know that what he says doesn't really mean too much because PolitiFact shows that he only tells the truth 4% of the time. So, but anyway, that aside, he says that the reason he's doing this is that he's nostalgic for back in the day how was, if something's made out of American steel, that means it's really high quality. He says steel is the backbone of this country. Based on nothing, by the way, he's literally the only person that's ever said that. But he says, yeah, steel's the backbone of our country. So we need to be producing our own steel, or we need to we, we need to bolster our steel industry. Well, so he does this by putting a tariff on steel, which back when W. Bush did it, that actually cost us 200,000 jobs, more people than the steel industry even employs. Well, I was going to say, the nation's backbone is made of steel. Sounds really good. <laughs> I'm serious, like, that's probably his, like, a talking point that I feel like if anybody was like, the American, the American nation's backbone is made of steel. Like, I'm like, yeah, man, fucking steel, yeah, like, sounds awesome. Uh, we can talk about uh, how people have tried to excuse what he's doing. Like, they say, well, this is a blow to China, and we should be getting into trade wars with China because they've been, you know screwing us over for a long time okay let's talk about that so we I'm... import three percent of our steel from china because steel is heavy and we have to move it a long way we import actually most of our steel from canada right yeah like oh we're only screwing over people that are you know our closest well, allies we're not hurting china at all it's fine because but like now we we're, make, we're making exemptions for like countries like canada but the problem i heard and i understand is that like uh, if China wants to sell their steel, then they'll just sell it through another country. So if you make exemptions, then your tariffs really aren't doing anything but uh, possibly, I guess, hurting America. Because it won't hurt yeah. the Chinese. They'll just sell it through Canada or, like, another country. And also... Uh... But the economists, like, the thing that's pissing me off is, like... So I started out with, like, huh, tar tariffs are bad. And then I keep hearing all these economists be like, well, it'll probably be fine. You know, like the, the machine that goes into action after everything Trump says to try to, like, justify it by the numbers. Because apparently you can make anything just sound fine with numbers. Yeah, I'm, yeah I saw that. The guy that was saying, well, this aluminum can is only going to increase by about 20%, but that's only the steel in this can or the aluminum in this can. And so that adds up or that ends up only being a few pennies, which is fine. And or he said the same thing about cars. It's like the steel that goes into cars will increase the value of this car only by about nine hundred dollars. And it's like, well, that's actually a lot of money for you know normal people. But you can hand wave it away and pretend like it's not. I, guess... I remember what I was about to say though that I forgot a second ago. Hey, go ahead. Is that Trump never actually labeled China a currency manipulator, which he swore he would do day one. You remember the um, things he's going to do in his first hundred days of office? He made I... that promise to the American voter. That was one of them. He never did it. He still hasn't done it. He doesn't really care that much about re rescuing America from China. I know this, he's and just I, also, sort of, I also... He just... just sort of does things and retroactively looks for reasons why it's a good idea. He, I mean, here's the thing that annoys me, and just people like don't realize, because the machine goes into action to be like, all right, we have to take what he said run it back through the machine and make it make sense. Yeah. 
He Spin sounds, doctors. Yeah, well, he sounds like, you know, like, you remember those old, those great old, like, WWF and, like, WCW, like, wrestling <laughs> interviews where, like, they'd give this weird interview with metaphors before the match? Yeah. That's well, how what, could I forget? Yeah, that's what all his speeches sound like. But now imagine that wrestler was president, and now, like, the, the spin doctors have to be like, well, what the Macho Man actually meant was, uh, you know, you see, uh, when Hulkamania runs wild over you, he's talking about American exceptionalism. <laughs> yep. When Hulkamania runs wild over you, brother, step into a Slim Jim. Oh, yeah. And you're just like, all right. We what? Gotta... Uh, I think what he actually meant was that China's a currency manipulator and, oh, my Lord. Yeah, no, that's what they do. What really irritates me, because I got into an argument the other day, is I'm not, I'm very irritated. I'm irritated all over the place right now. Like, I'm tired. Uh, I We had parent-teacher conferences, so I had to talk to parents uh, it's I'm always like, fun. My hours are all off. I didn't drink a lot of coffee today, so I'm just like exhausted. I got home and like just took a nap, and then like I feel like whenever I'm really tired like this, I get really annoyed when people begrudge me sleep. You know? I oh, that would be me. You know, they're all like, "Why are you so tired?" All you know, I'm like, I swear to God, like mm. I didn't say that, but I was all like, "Peter, wake up, drink yeah. coffee, let's do the podcast." You shouldn't go to sleep at five o'clock in the afternoon. I know I shouldn't go to sleep at five o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> like, like it's a choice. Like I'm too. Like mm, the sun is up. Let me go to sleep at a weird time so that I can then friggin' wake up at one in the morning feeling fully refreshed, but knowing that my day doesn't start till seven. Right. That Actually, sounds that sounds great to me because that way you have like six hours to just do whatever you want. You could prepare for your day or you could fuck around. Like it's no. uh, it's up to you. No, I, I, it's nice, very but, pleasant. Kelly, that's a problem. Is like. I, my day is going to go from like 7 a.m. to like all. So I'm going to be exhausted all day. So this time that I'm like awake should be time I'm asleep. So that the time I'm awake is time that's productive time. It's just really irritating. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm in that I'm in that mode right now where I'm just like I hate everything. Somebody invited me out for a beer for a night and I couldn't go because I'm just like I can't. I'll fall asleep on the way home. I can't do it. I. But yeah, so the all the economists uh, keep going. Uh, they keep like, I don't know enough about uh, economics to know if tariffs uh, are good or bad anymore. I used to think they were bad. I did a bunch of reading. It turns out they intensify feelings of nationalism, and they put additional strain on banks, and they shake the confidence in the global market. I mean, I've had to, when I was still going to uh, business school i had to study tariffs but we only looked at the math side of it right mm -hmm. like we looked at um if uh, this product has such and such tariff then um it'll end up making this thing cost this when it gets over here and if the tariff rises up too much then we'll just go over here and buy stuff from this thing and we was looking at how tariffs could price certain um certain businesses out of the market yeah but then they just find secondhand places to do it at and um, it was just sort of a the overall point of the exercises was to show why certain places end up being used by American businesses way more than others why they just keep going to uh, more and more third world countries like third world and super third world and super duper third world and it's because of you know just the levels of tariffs just go down as you go out that way yeah. and uh, if it ever and if we ever start doing enough business with them, then they go from super duper third world to just super to just regular third world. And then the tariffs spike way up. And then we go back over to these other places that were third world, but now they're super duper third world because everyone stopped doing business with them because of higher tariffs. I know we can use tariffs. So it's this, this great uh, seesaw effect. I know we can use tariffs to sort of help out industries. Like I know the electric car industry and like the, the solar and wind industry you know, by, by using uh, tariff manipulations and, like, government subsidies, we can make those businesses financially viable until they can stand on their own so that then they become, a, but they kind of have to be nursed, you know what I mean? So yeah. I know he removed those on solar, so, like, by his, his removal of um, protections on, like, solar panels and stuff like that, he screwed the solar panel industry. Also, here's the thing. He does a bunch of weird, he'll do all this stuff, and then everybody's talking That's... about, like, the Stormy Daniels thing, but then he does like cartoon that's, villain um, stuff. Like he he uh, uh quite... that's probably the worst thing that this president's done to us, and not enough people are talking about it. It's how he's fucked us on solar panels. Because he's like we America should be leading the world in it. We're not even following the world in it. Like all, literally, we're the only country that didn't sign off on the Paris Accord. Uh, Trump decided, yeah, no, we're not going to do that. So now we're not doing. 
But never mind that. We need to be investing in alternative energy sources. Every other country is doing this. Every other country that's going to be a major player in 100 years is doing this. Yeah. We're not We're not going to be a major player in 100 years. We're going to be Russia part two. Like Right now we're being led by Russia, Putin's puppet. Probably, but, uh, pretty probably. soon we're going to have their currency. Because you know that the Russian ruble is the second to lowest... Um, valued currency in the world right next to another ruble. Because all the predictions, all the predictions show that like with the current consumption of resources in the next 100 years or whatever, I don't know what time predictor they have on it, is that like, it'll eventually come down to like, instead of the way it is now, it's going to be just like you and like a gas mask with a rifle <laughs> sh shooting people for gasoline. You know what I mean? Like the country equivalent of that. Like yeah. people are going to go to war. So like they're investing in alternative energy. China's made this huge pledge to like uh, take over a huge sector of the artificial intelligence market. So they're already working on that. Meanwhile, we I mean, pledge to not even use real intelligence anymore. Uh, it's like the deplorables will point to Hong Kong and say, look over there. They have all that dirty air. And you're saying they're leading us in clean energy. <laughs> And it's like, yeah, yeah, they are. That city's leading us in clean energy. It reminds me. So, um, <laughs> how dumb do you look now? It reminds me of, uh, you remember the old Davy Crockett movie we used to watch? The, yeah. Yeah, the old Disney Davy Crockett movie. It, the, the Chinese remind me of the way that the guy playing uh, Andrew Jackson described Davy Crockett's volunteers. He's like, these damn volunteers, when I want to fight, they fight. When I want to go home, they go home. <laughs> it's like, yep. it's like this damn China, when. When they want to burn coal, they burn coal. Whenever they want to become the leader of free industry, I mean, of, uh, of clean energy, they become the leader of clean energy. Yeah. So that's that's happening right now. I'd, I'd like, but like the economists, like I got in an argument with somebody the other day, a, a coworker I respect, but like he's more right, and he was arguing that like how can you prove that any uh, specific economic policies led to boom or bust in any presidency? And I'm like, I can't, because I'm not smart. Well, I mean, how can you prove that you're even alive right now and not just a brain in a jar in some yeah, person's that's, laboratory that's, that's, a billion years in what you would think of as the future right now? Oh, my God, I love the idea of us as two brains in two separate jars podcasting with little headphones on. <laughs> can we yep. get can we get that as our cover art, possibly? I Actually, speaking of, I've been working all day on a cover art for us, and I've Put all the proofs together, and ladies and gentlemen out there, pretty soon we're going to have official Muckrakers art. Uh, I want to get official Muckrakers merch. Oh, by the way, if you're listening, we're on iTunes now, all 12 of you, so get on it. Give us a rating. Leave us some commentary. I want to win one of those iTunes best of. I want people to give me an award for talking, which has never happened before. <laughs> I... We need, uh, yeah, if you're listening to us on uh, YouTube, be sure to uh, comment, rate, and subscribe. And then, and then go to iTunes and do the same thing. Um, yes. So just like give us all the points and all the so yeah all the subs. We felt we fell apart with that whole like well how can you prove anything and I'm like I don't know Socrates what is justice like I, so that that irritates me because I don't I don't have time to like talk about the philosophical nature of reality when it's just like let's just the argument sprawl oh all right let's go to the next the next headline uh, Putin You're talking about. Putin and his nukes. Oh, yeah, so Putin brags that he has a new missile that can reach the USA and is, like, indestructible. So I'm going to read you the headline real quick. Uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin boasted Thursday of a new weaponry claims will render NATO defenses completely useless. Delivering a warning to the world about Russia's resurgent military might. Russia still has the greatest nuclear potential in the world, but nobody listened to... Oh, I should have done that in Putin's voice. Russia still has the greatest nuclear potential in the world, but nobody listened to us. If they have the greatest potential in the world, that means they're the furthest behind anyone else in the world. So... And then he goes, listen now. So Putin says this because he's running for re-election. And my question is, why? You're a dictator. Yeah, he's gonna win with like a with ninety. What is it? Ninety-seven percent is what dictators always get. Why is he campaigning? A hundred percent is suspicious. <laughs> Why is he campaigning? You've always had the ability to nuke the United States. We also have that ability, but like you don't hear us bragging about it. Well, yeah, you do, kind of. Um, but that's the point. It's like, yeah, dude, like this is a this is a Cold War, like like. Russia can nuke me. Yeah, all right. Well, yeah, we know Russia. We had a whole thing about that. It was the Cold War. We could nuke you too. Yada yada. Like I don't know. Oh, 
Why don't also, we... Russia, congratulations on winning the Cold War. You've um, really pulled it out at the 11th hour there. Did not see Trump coming. Yeah, they were kind of like the Rudy of the Cold War. Like, they just, we were just like, the game's over. And then Putin's like, put me in coach. And they're like, you're too little. You can't do it. <laughs> I will break you. Well, they haven't won yet. Like, uh, I don't think, I feel like, uh, well, I guess we've all won the Cold War because we're not glowing right now. <laughs> uh... my, my, my students all the time ask me, they're like, uh, hey, uh, do you think World War Three will start? And I'm like, well, I hope not, but if it does, we won't be around long to see about it, so I wouldn't worry too much. I, it I, reminds me of uh, The End is Nigh, whenever you get like the secret ending and the guys like talking about a story, because the plot is is that it's post-Armageddon, the bombs have dropped, and in the post-game credits, you're just like a mass of flesh and a giant will of flesh from all, fused to all your neighbors. And he's all like, so uh, one time I slammed my finger in the door, and uh, it sort of broke the nail, and I was like looking at it, and you know, it hurt like hell, and then a few weeks later, it had grown back funny, and I'm like, is this my nail now? Well, uh, anyway, point is, is that I was picking at it when the bombs fell. <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't, I don't know how like dark to it, get with the kids, but I want to be like, uh, yeah, man, it's it's not a big deal because look, if, if, if you're, you're we're we're we were we were in a uh, the Big Apple, New York City. So if uh, if if World War Three happens, uh, we'll either a be very dead or b I will be leading you as a band of like my soldiers as we scavenge <laughs> we scavenge for food and gasoline. It's Mad Max, but you're the cans of dog food. I hate to tell you. What's that mean? <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't just enjoy your reality now. But yeah, like, <laughs> but yeah, I don't understand why why dictators like like why why even hold elections? Like, you're, there's no illusion that people in, in in Putin's Russia are free. Like, like yeah, I think one of the just so one of the this um this disingenuous way that they do things where they just want to be all smarmy about it. It's like, we had an election. I'm a fair democratic leader. Just like whenever they were invading the Ukraine, they were all like, what Russian military? They're dressed like you. They have your tanks. They got those from Halloween store. They funny costumes. Like, do you think that, like, maybe Putin's just thing in his life is that, like, he just wants to be liked? I mean, that's... Trump's whole thing, so maybe? I wonder if maybe underneath every brutal dictator is just like a, a little guy that just wants to be liked and loved. Uh, yeah, could be. Because I've, yeah. I've been watching a lot of documentaries on Hitler lately. I went down the Hitler rabbit hole. I try not to because I feel like it's too easy. Yeah. Uh, but like I watched the whole thing about his inner circle and it was crazy. They were so catty. Oh, shit. Hold on, hold on. This is a uh, breaking news that just popped up on my phone. I gotta talk about a different story first, if that's okay. Just yeah, the, yeah. um, the... Fuck, what's his name? Spit Tom it out. Scott. Oh, you talking about the, the governor Rick from... Scott. Yeah, the governor from Florida that looks like a, someone put a put like a suit on a penis, and they're like, hey, this is funny. Look. Yeah, this I, penis... I, have in my note, I have in my notes right here. Uh, gun update, giant surf, serpent and governor of Florida, Rick Scott just signed a gun regulation bill so uh very quickly it's like bare bone stuff like you have to be 21 now instead of 18 to buy guns and uh that bump stock is now illegal and uh like one or two other things it doesn't really matter oh also it makes it so that it's okay if you're a teacher to um have a gun in the classroom but with 144 hours of training man so... i barely get all my training in as a teacher so maybe that'll be a uh, uh impediment. yeah that's that, that's actually, I laughed when I heard that because I've known several teachers in my life and they don't have time to get those 144 hours in. They'll get like one of those a week for 144 weeks. I don't have time to sleep as a teacher! Yeah, we were just going over that earlier. You were, um, woken up at five being told, now Peter, you shouldn't be sleeping this time of day. Yeah, but, I, got, uh, I got you blown on my phone going, hey, hey, we're going to podcast? Mm, that's cutting into my <laughs> dinner time and I got to have my dinner. I'm like, ah! Ah! Like I'm just, I'm just like, I'm just losing my mind. I'm just like, I need to sleep, but I need to do this podcast. But I want everyone to go die. I need like a stasis bubble. I swear <laughs> to God, if I sometimes if I could fly a rocket ship into a singularity of a black hole where time stretches out forever, I'd finally get caught up on my training and my sleep. Yeah, but uh, okay, this is the reason why I wanted to um run past all that is uh, the NRA just sued Florida over the um, bill that Rick Scott signed into law. 
Look at that, all those people saying the NRA never killed anyone in all their years. Why are you talking about the NRA? They don't do nothing. They don't have nothing to do with nothing. Oh, well, look at this. They fucking do. They have their hands in every pot. They pay for every Republican, and when the Republicans dare go against them, they sued the state. Oh, look at that. I saw somebody that had a really great uh, photo about bump stocks, and it was a guy that had modified his uh, his gun with a 2 by 4 to act as a bump stock. And, like, they, and their whole smart meme thing was like, huh, huh, what are we going to do? Ban wood? <laughs> and I'm like, alright, so here's the thing about illegal modifications on guns. Uh, they don't work well. Uh, we have a mutual. You have to, you have to actually know what you're doing. It's the same reason why uh, the underwear bomber didn't murder a bunch of people. Yeah. It's because if you make your own bomb, sometimes it fails, and then you just set your crotch on fire instead of killing everyone in the airplane. I'll tell you a story. That's why we don't just sell legal bombs and say bombs don't kill people. People. Kill I'll tell people. you. I'll tell you a great gun modification story from a mutual friend of ours who were named Nameless during the uh, automatic weapons ban. He bought a he bought a weapon, a gun, uh, from a police officer. Uh, the guy was off duty. It wasn't like a cop walked up to him and was like, hey, would you like to buy this legally modified gun? But he bought this gun, uh, and it was illegally modified from semi-auto to actually be full auto. And uh, he went out to uh, shoot some possums uh, that were attacking his chickens. And, uh, Poor the, chickens! So, so the gun got stuck on full auto. Like he was like, all right, possum. <laughs> Say goodbye. Blap, blap. The poor, the poor chickens. Uh, -da 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 -da. So, like, he's got to sit there and hold this gun that is now just firing on its own full auto until uh, it runs out of bullets. So my point is, like, yeah, so you can illegally modify guns, but the more difficult you make it, the more likely you are to be like, what's going on? And then look down the own barrel of your gun, and then problem solves itself. Are the chickens okay? Uh, yeah, that's why he was shooting the possum. I was just making sure that, like, his gun didn't go crazy and just blow up all the chickens. No, he didn't, like, throw it on the ground and, like, watch it dance around cartoon-like. Like, he's not <laughs> he's not Wile E. Coyote. He's not like, oh, no! And then, like, just throw it. And it just, the gun just follows him shooting every... No, no, it's like... He just, he just held it. He's like, all right, well, if I guess... It, if it was a cartoon, I see him, like, grabbing a chicken and using it to, like, try to muffle the shot so his neighbors don't hear the guns going out. Yeah. Or the bullets going out. It's just, it's, but yeah, so, like, yeah, legal modifications, while you can do it... You can turn any... Uh, you can turn any semi-automatic gun into a full auto if you just go on and look out and modify it yourself. But the fact that most people aren't gunsmiths mean that they'll probably mess it up and the gun will jam or no longer work. So, uh, article reads, uh, Governor Scott talks about signing in a school safety bill. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Wild it, wild it. Wild it. Do, yes. it, do it in a news voice. Uh, I actually had a plan for that. I was just trying to figure out where the article really starts. Um, the National Rifle Association sued in federal court Friday to block a new Florida law just signed by Governor Rick Scott that prohibits gun sales to anyone under 21. We filed a lawsuit against the state for violating the constitutional right of 18 to 21-year-olds, said Marion Hammer, lobbyist for the NRA in Florida. <laughs> is that a man or a woman? But I like the last name is Hammer. <laughs> Why do these people... time to lay the hammer down. Why do these people always sound like the company that was trying to steal Iron Man's uh, technology? Um, hmm... I think because they are based on these people. That would make sense. <laughs> but yeah, the the um, summary I gave of the article earlier is basically everything you gotta know. Yeah, I noticed NRA's that. They're a bunch of smarmy assholes, and they are actively campaigning to try and murder your children. So why are so many people still defending them and pretending like they're nothing but like this fun Boy Scouts club? Because I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I, I got it. I, I, I've cracked the code. Guns are penises. Yeah, no, everyone's made that c comparison. So when people hear, like, they're going to take away our guns, uh, they're like, they're not going to take away our dicks! <laughs> like, that's, that's, that's how they see it. They're like, you're not, you're, you're going to come in my house and take my dick! I use my dick to protect my kids! <laughs> if somebody comes in my house and threatens my family, he's going to face my dick. Like, really, I, I love the idea of, like, it, if you just go do a find and replace on these articles and just change the word, like, guns to dicks... It's hilarious, because it becomes more true. And also, you just put the word penis or dick a whole bunch of times in a news article. And that was the first time I showed my son my dick. I showed him how to use it, so that he'd know how to handle his dick when he came of age. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with knowing how to handle a dick properly. 
<laughs> Proper um, dick hygiene. Wait, that makes sense, but not for guns. <laughs> Gun hygiene. Uh, so <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about the doomsday clock. Uh, the doomsday clock is one of my favorite things that not enough people pay attention to. Uh, so a little bit of background on the doomsday clock. Uh, uh, founded in 1945 by the University of Chicago scientist who had helped develop the first atomic weapons in the Manhattan Project, the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists created the Doomsday Clock two years later. So it's nice. They basically <laughs> invented a way for the world to destroy itself, and they're like, man, we should do something nice. Let's, let's make a giant clock. Um, it uses the imagery of apocalypse, midnight, and the contemporary idiom of nuclear explosion, the countdown to zero, to convey threats to humanity and the planet. The decision to move or leave in place, the minute hand of the Doomsday Clock is made every year by the Bulletin Science and Security Board in consultation with its board of sponsors, which includes 15 Nobel laureates. The clock has become a universally recognized indicator of the world's vulnerability to catastrophe from nuclear weapons, climate change, and new technologies emerging in other domains. So I bring this up because it's now two minutes till midnight. Yay! <laughs> I was waiting for a reaction, just like, all right, whatever. Yeah. So it's like uh, whenever someone retires from uh, working at a place for a long time, what's the most popular going away gift? A watch or a clock. In this case, the planet Earth or all of humanity. Because the clock is their going away gift. We're all gonna die in two minutes. Yeah, that's always kind of weird when someone retires. They're like, here's a watch, so you can see how long it takes you to die. Watch the <laughs> minutes and hours of your lonely existence tick by because you're now no longer useful to society. Yep. Yeah. So that's that's a thing that's happening, and I find it really interesting. And like, just nobody seems to pay attention to it. But then again, no one pays attention to science anyway. Like, uh, there was a great yeah. story I read. It was a series of, of uh, uh, like a text exchange or a tweet exchange from an anti-vaxxing mom, mm -hmm. uh, and she basically her her 19 year old daughter went and got vaccinated, and so she's she oh it was a Facebook post. So she posts about it, and she's like, I just. You know, you do your best to prepare kids, and I just don't know what to do. I mean, I just, I try to teach her all the facts. And these people are like, support, they're like, yeah, what, did the doctor pressure her into it? I mean, I should, maybe you should have a talk to her. She's like, I just don't know if I'm, a, I just, my emotions are running wild, and I just don't, I don't know what to do with her. And I'm like, well, <laughs> she's 19, let her get a vaccine. What are you worried she's going to become, like, all of a sudden she's going to develop autism at 20? <laughs> Uh, I mean, we've also talked with uh, Flat Earthers on Facebook, and uh, it's kind of the same thing, how they um, they just talk about stuff, and it's like, oh yeah, well, uh, if, the earth is, if the Earth is really round, then why is it when people make really long bridges, they don't account for the curvature of the Earth? Because they do! They I... do account for that. That is a thing that they do. Where did you hear that they didn't? Here's my problem with Flat Earthers, is uh, I know they're wrong, and I know reasons why they're wrong. But they start throwing up all these memes, and it takes me forever to research the science and the math to understand yeah. why they're wrong. Yeah, that's uh, that's a that's like the most infuriating thing ever. It's like I, because I want to be correct, I have to do my homework. I have to make sure I know all the facts, all the counter arguments, the sources for the counter arguments, why they're incorrect or why there's some wiggle room there and i have to know all these different paradigms of thought and then i finally come back and give the person you know several paragraphs of explanation of why whenever you look at the nuance of the situation what they're saying is incorrect but technically this other thing is true but factually this is what's actually there and then what do they do they just fucking copy and paste and drag another goofy meme onto their response button, hit reply, and suddenly it's, oh yeah, well in 1920, Hillary, ba da 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 Oh it's yeah. Like, God damn it. They'll start talking about their, our reptilian overlords are like, uh, and I just like... But they don't, they don't even put that much effort into it. They just drag another goofy meme yeah. into the reply box and hit send, and it's like, God damn it, so now I have to do the same thing again. They're making me do homework! That's the thing, it's like... Ah, uh, it's like I'm doing... Because, because it takes no effort to be a moron to just make shit up off the top of your head. And that's why, that's what gives, um... God, what's that guy's name that we're trying to make our podcast after at first? Oh, Alex Jones. Jones. Alex Jones. That's what makes him so infuriating is that he can just make this shit up off the top of his head, like Pizzagate saying that Hillary had a, a child sex ring in a pizzeria basement. You know, uh, whenever you actually looked at... One person was actually inspired by those things to go in there with a gun and try to rescue the children, but the place has no basement. But anyway, no, no one died, no one was shot. The person you know, was. A lot of times, I, you know, when I'm watching these Hitler takes, documentaries, I go. It takes no effort to. 
uh, just make shit up like this is my point. Whereas people that are in the correct side, they have to spend an overwhelming amount of energy, make, you know, disproving this, pushing it to the side. It's done. It's forgotten about. But there's tons of deplorables that will never hear any of those explanations because it requires more than a couple words to explain. And it requires more than a headline to explain why it's completely ridiculous. So they're just off to read the next conspiracy theory. And it's like, God damn it, this is impossible to keep up with. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's exhausting why... trying to be correct. That's why I don't engage uh, with... I, I just... I'm now... I just insult people. I just put up gifts that just say, like, you're a bitch, aren't you? And then they just... <laughs> they, they come back with just, like, all their memes, and then I'll just put up some... I just do what they do. Uh, but, yeah. but my... my video... uh, yeah, I mean, I gave up talking to them back in 2016. Like, I tried it for a couple months, for, like, October and the very start of November. And then something happened around November 10th or 11th. I can't quite remember. And then I wasn't on the internet for a while. I did like that our, I, our, I our, re our retweet that. of uh, trigger, trigger, what was it, trigger conservative in two words? Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, we had our first viral tweet. Um, it was hashtag trigger conservative in two words. And all I wrote was um, she won with a picture of the popular vote, right? And Hillary won by three to five million more votes than uh, Trump. And that's that's all it was. People she crawled. Won. Two words. People oh crawled. Oh, my God. They crawled out of the woodwork with all of their conspiracy theories, and they're just firing at us. And all I did was look at them and go to bed. And I go, that's right. Your turn to do homework. I'm going to sleep. Yeah, I, I never responded to a single one. Like, I, I liked one response that one person wrote, and yeah. that was it. I engaged with it no further. So there was no point to it. It's like, yeah, let, first of all, I didn't say she won the election. I didn't say what she won. She won the popular vote. That's true, but whatever. They're asserting their own ideas as to what I mean into that, and that at the end of the day, that's that's the whole point. Trigger a conservative with two words. Look how fucking triggered they are. Sweet. I win. Um, so what I was going to say about Alex Jones earlier was like, I've been watching all these Hitler documentaries and I'm always like, I wonder what Hitler would sound right. Sound like in English. Right. Yeah. Uh, and then I realized he would sound like Alex Jones. Yeah. He was the, he Burn was the fucking thugs gay. Okay. It's the color of a banana. You got to understand me. Okay. <laughs> I've talked a lot about, about uh, a lot about this, but there was a terrifying, um, thing where he was going super anti-Semitic. And uh, I can't remember the name of the guy he puts a picture of up, uh, but the guy was uh, I don't think the guy was Jewish, and he's just going on this anti-Semitic rat rant, and he's just going enemy, enemy, yeah. ah, I will resist you, ah, and, like he's just like screaming and like it's like he's having a past life regression, you know, like the people that get hit. I was hypnot looking at. Huh? Oh, go ahead. Go, the, you, know, go the, ahead. you know that when people get hypnotized by a therapist, and the therapist is like, all right, yeah. I, I want you to go back and, and talk about when when he touched you. And then they're just, they, they go into that like, no, ah! and they're like acting it out. That's like what he does, but huh. about Jewish people. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, I was like, were you going to say something? He just, it's like a, I, I like was, a but then it's up. like, ah, it's on the, the edge, it's on the tip of my tongue. Well, let's go into Russian news while you're figuring that out. Uh, in oh, Russian... yeah, uh, Gar Gary Cohn, that's right. I was just going to mention Gary Cohn. That's um, whenever the news of him retiring broke. I was looking at what the deplorables had to say about that. And what they had to say about it was, oh, he's a Jew anyway. It's like, oh, okay then. No, I guess we're well, they... they They said globalist, but that's what they meant as Jew. Yeah, that's another one of their double speaks. So in, uh, in other news today, there was another Russian attack in London, which is fascinating. And I'm going to get into some other Russian attacks. Uh... The former Russian spy, Sergei V. Uh, Skripal, Skripop, Skripal, Skripal, uh, and his daughter, uh, Yulia Skripal, remain unconscious and are in critical but stable condition. Britain's Home Secretary, Amber Rudd, told lawmakers on Thursday, adding that it was too early to appoint blame for a brazen and reckless attack involving a nerve agent. So that seems like a pretty leading statement. Like, it's too early. It's too early to talk. It's too early to call this a brazen attack with a nerve agent by the Russians. Too early. To, it's too early. Uh, the because Russian, it might have been done by someone else? Well, the Russian government has denied involvement, and on Wednesday, the Russian embassy in London described warnings of potential British retaliation as a testament of London's growing unpredictability as a partner in international <laughs> relations, adding that British policy towards Russia was inconsistent and looks rather miscalculated, not least in the eyes of the Russian public. I like how they're saying that um, 
Europe's the one that's unhinged, and uh, so that's that's the one we have to look out for. So Russian Russia has a history of like crazy, and I gotta say, if you're gonna assassinate somebody, they're doing it with pizzazz. Um, <laughs> there was back in the fifties or sixties, and I can't remember if it was London or Mexico City. I think it was in England. Uh, there was a guy that I guess like uh, escaped Russia and was just like, uh, I'm going to write books. Book one, Stalin is a douchebag. And so he was doing much stuff like this, and Stalin was like, I don't like this guy. So uh, they assassinated him, and it was crazy. So what they did, they walked up behind him. They made a, a small umbrella gun. So they invented a gun that looked like an umbrella that would fire a small, tiny little pellet, and that pellet would have uh, cyanide in it. So they walked up and kind of poked him in the back of the leg and fired this little pellet. And I guess he was like, oh, you poked me in the back of the leg. And they're like, sorry. And that was it. And then he died, and then later on, they, the whole thing came out about he was assassinated with an umbrella gun. In the, <laughs> in the 2000s, there was a, a Russian spy living in London, and they killed him with nuclear-laced tea. Like, That's awesome. Yeah, they put, a, they put, a, they put a, some kind of nuclear isotope or something in his tea, and uh, like, so he was alive for like weeks, but this isotope was inside him and just shredding his insides, and so like he was alive, God, but he was that's, a dead man. That's like... That's dangerous to everyone around him yeah. because, um, what do you call it? Radiation doesn't uh, stop where you do, so just everyone that he's near is dying. No, 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 no. That's what's so brilliant about this. So the type of isotope, so if you know anything about radiation, there's alpha, beta, and gamma rays. Now, yeah. gamma rays are like the nuclear ones that can just go like 100 feet down. you got to be in a concrete bunker. They're, they, they shoot straight through you. Uh, beta rays can be stopped by like lead shielding and stuff like that. Um, alpha rays uh, can be stopped by like a t-shirt or a piece of paper, right? Oh, that's, is that what he had then? That's what's so fascinating about up. it. So, so, so now he's got this, he's ingested this radioactive isotope uh, that's putting off alpha radiation. And so it's being stopped It's by his insides. But the problem is that means it's bouncing around like a pinball, like just melting his organs and stuff as he lays dying. It's not killing anybody Damn. else, but it's killing the hell out of him. Yeah, and That's... so this, and, and in this late this latest one, they found uh, Sir, Sir, Sergi, Sergey, Sergey, and his daughter. They were just like I guess they were. They they said they found him on a park bench, and like he was like waving his arms and just acting weird. And so they they showed up to be like, uh, "All right, mate, uh, what you doing with your arms there?" And he was just like, "I am dying," or he might have been unconscious by that point. Turns out it was nerve. <laughs> and turns out it was a nerve agent. Twenty like twenty one other people had to go to the hospital. Like. Uh, the cops that showed up were like, hey, what's what's going on here? Uh, they're all sick, too. What's all this, then? So this is huge. Russia Russia basically uh, did a nerve gas attack uh, on foreign soil. That's insane. Uh, I mean, they've been killing almost everyone that they used in um, stealing the 2016 election, too. That's why the Mueller investigation is now also looking into murder. All the people that Vlad's made disappear since it was over. Yeah, but that's... And it's, a lot of it are people that helped him, right? They've never turned against him. They just became too much of a liability, yeah. so he made them disappear as soon as they got back to Russia. Well, that's what's so brazen about it is, like, nerve gas is a, like, a banned, like... It's an easily traceable substance, because only... It's not like you can be like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna brew up some nerve gas in my bathtub. Like, it takes, like money and like science and machinery like a like a complex to make to make this nerve gas so like and hey it's also it's banned it's one of the like the banned substances like you're like uh, uh, yeah against the geneva convention and all that yeah because it's a war crime to use nerve gas because you know we're all like man look you can shoot them you can stab them you can choke them you can punch them to death but you can't use nerve gas like we have a list of acceptable ways to kill enemy combatants but we've banned this one yeah, the idea being is that uh, maybe if uh, we tell them not to use it, we don't use it either. Maybe they won't use it on us. Well, you know, won't suck so much. Once, once they used it in Syria, and like the world didn't just ascend in a hellstorm of just like fury on uh, the Assad government for using nerve gas. We kind of opened the door. And we're like, hey, look, uh, yeah. please don't use nerve gas. Yeah. But if you do, we're not going to do anything about it. Yeah, we set precedent for. We're not doing shit. And right now we can't do shit because America's paralyzed and they were sort of kind of, you know, leading the way and uh, making sure the world kept its shit together. I mean, Team America, World Police and all that. 
Yeah, well, I gotta say that the thing is... Which that, is also a criticism of us, but uh, we're still doing it? What I like least, about... Kind of? What I like about London is I feel like they'll be very, very classy, and that, like, the they'll find... I feel like London will find the people that were involved in this attack, and all these people will have accidents. Very classy, <laughs> but clearly assassinations, but, like, very classy accidents, you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I feel like London's got a pretty good head on their shoulders. There was a really cool. Um, I think they were called the Baker Street, the Baker Street Boys. Uh, during World War II, there was a group that included yeah. uh, the Ian Fleming, the guy that wrote James Bond, the guy that played Saruman in um, Lord of the Rings. I can't remember the actor's name. He was around forever. He's like a hundred million years old. So they were Saruman? all Saruman. Yeah. You said Saruman. Yeah. What was it supposed to be? Saruman. Saruman. You know what? Shut up, you nerd. Um, point being, because you, you can't remember the actor's name either. That's what we really need. Uh, I don't know the actor's name. Anyway, uh, so they, they had the, like, what had to be the coolest job in the world, and I wish I could apply for this. They hung out in like a little building, and they would just sit down and brainstorm ways to kill more Nazis. Hmm. That was their whole job. They were just like, all right, chaps, what do we got today? And then just like, you know, pull out the chart and we're like, all right, well, we found out that maybe if we do this, more Nazis will die. And like, it was like... That's got to be the coolest job. Like, what did you do from 1940 to 1945? Ah, you know, a little this and that. Yep. Synergy. Yeah, Nazis. Syner- they went over here. Synergy. But yeah, like, so, so like, really, that's such a brazen attack that, like, they used a nerve agent. That's, they could have killed this guy, uh, and or they could have tried to kill this guy and his daughter, like, any other way. You know, they, they could have strangled them, sawed off their heads, like, chainsawed them to death. But, like... They used a nerve agent to show, like, because you know that nerve agents leave traces, and, like, you're going to know who did it. Yeah. And, um, so, jumping from uh, nerve agents, in America, apparently a porn star is suing our president. See? See? That makes me mad! We're talking about yeah. <laughs> nerve agents, and people are like, he had sex with a porn star! He had sex with a porn star! I don't care! He misallocated, um election funds oh that's the funny part if you're uh, deplorable and you um donated to trump pretty good odds that uh, your money went straight into a hooker's hands they so, don't care uh, you know job. why they don't believe her because she's a woman and also a prostitute sorry not a prostitute uh adult film star uh but also maybe a prostitute i'm not sure well i mean she was paid one hundred twenty thousand dollars. that's kind of prostitute but the <laughs> Um, but the the idea that, like, they're going to be like, nah, uh, I don't believe it. Why? Because she's a woman? Like, because you know they don't believe women. They believe that, like, I I don't know if, oh, like... Oh, by the way, um, Sarah Huckabee Sanders admitted that all this was real whenever she said, look, it was settled in court, y'all. It was settled in court already. Which, by the way, made Trump furious. He was so mad that she admitted that it was real. Even though she was trying to say it was settled forever ago, this is behind us, this has nothing to do with anything, that still admits that it's real, which pissed the president off, and so he started attacking Sarah Huckabee Sanders. <laughs> the person that's paid to keep it his lies is just like like oh no uh, i wrote this down on my arm but i sweated i can't read his notes um <laughs> like dude that's your fault like yeah, it, yeah it's it's not your it's not the person you're paying to lie for you's fault that they can't even keep up with the lies so i hate her i hate sarah huckabee sanders because she reminds me of a history teacher i used to have <laughs> but i don't hate her for the reasons other people hate her there's a lot of there's a lot of just like how dare she come out and lie to the american public well, that's her fucking job. Uh, I mean, Sean Spicer did the same thing. The Mooch did the same thing. Everyone that works for Trump has to lie because the if they told the truth, he'd fire them like very quickly. Well, I mean, that's, like, it's a conservative hit job. Well, it's or, not I mean, even it's a liberal hit job. It's not even like you can go back to past presidents. Their press secretary is supposed to be like their mouthpiece. It's yeah, like their, their cheerleader. It's like the little goblin from Lord of the Rings who's just like. Lord Sauron desires you to take a knee. He is merciful. Be like getting mad at that dude for lying. That's his job. Yep. Let's see. I mentioned Gary Cohen already. Uh, the the fun fact of the week is is that on the day that Trump declared, "There's no chaos in the White House, folks." Okay, we run a tight ship here. High energy, low chaos. Is the day that the porn star thing came out. She's suing him because he did not. Mister Businessman did not sign the contract saying that she's not allowed to talk. 
so she was sued for talking about it, but she's saying, no, no, you can't sue me because you never signed it, so it's not official. Also, I get to keep the money. And as soon as she's done with this uh, lawsuit, that means she can release dick pics of the president, which she has. What? He's, like, you're kidding me. His penis is online? She has it. She hasn't released it yet oh. because um, oh. she's still under in, she's still under non-disclosure. But that's why she's suing to get out from under it because he never signed it. Although I don't know, man. Like I still think and, that I, I and I'm, it is too late for him to sign it. I'm anti dick pic. I want to go ahead and be out there. Well, I'm not going to be googling it when it comes out. That would be horrifying. Oh, I'm totally but... I'm totally googling it. But I think on principle that we can't we can't hold the ideas we can't hold to our ideals that you shouldn't like body shame people and you shouldn't like i mean because it'd be like if if he was just like i've got naked photos of hillary clinton i'm going to release Ugh. them like, i wouldn't want to see those either no but my ideas on principle is just like people are going to be cheering this on and i'm like but it a it distracts from the fact that russia's nerve agenting people in a, a foreign soil and b it ultimately is not going to lead to anything. It's not like his deplorable, like, his supporters are going to be like, you know what, I supported the man, but when I saw his tiny penis, and who knows if it's tiny, it may be like, he may have a hog leg, he may have a big old whopping penis. But either way, it's not like the penis is going to... I don't think he would have ran for president if he did. What, if he had a big old whopping penis? Yeah, like, I'm pretty sure half the presidency is, you know... My dick could be bigger. I don't think he would have run for president. And then he runs for president. I don't think he would have run for president if his dad loved him. <laughs> yeah, that's the other half of it. I feel like what this guy needs is love's true kiss and like the his father's tears. <laughs> like I, I honestly like this is like a horror story and like and all the evil the evil man needed was love true love's kiss and his father's but, tears. Like but yeah, three. Three major events happened on the No Chaos Day. The uh, Gary Cohn thing. Oh, or did I even mention that? I mentioned it earlier. Yeah, you mentioned it like four Gary times. But Gary Cohn is the is the lead economic advisor in the United Jesus. States, and he's out the door. You're like the Sarah Huckabee Sanders of this podcast. I never actually said what he did. I, I mentioned that he was a Jew earlier. That was it. Yeah, isn't isn't that enough in this day and age? Probably. <laughs> I guess that is sort of repeating myself, economics advisor. You don't, have, course, so you don't have to do anything. They just have to know that you're Jewish, and then people are like, you know, I've been thinking about dusting off granddad's old anti-Semitism. Let's go get it out of the attic. <laughs> yeah, so uh, he did that because of the tariffs thing. We were on that earlier. That was one thing, and then um, the porn star was the other. What was the other thing? Oh, yeah, Kellyanne Conway. She uh, violated the Hatch Act multiple times. Again, that's Hatch more... Hatch Act says that if you work at the White House, you can't campaign in state elections, which she did on national television for pedophile Roy Moore in Alabama. And that's the problem is, like, so the, every, the water is so muddy that, like, that's something we should be... Well, we, we've already gone past that. We're not... No one's going to care, like... The rules yeah. are out the window. Caligula has appointed a horse to Senate, and we can't go back. Yeah, like that's it's like she should at the very least be fired, if not arrested. But nothing's going to happen because the rule of law doesn't matter. If it did, she would be in. A lot of people would be in jail at this point. I like to. I like to imagine that like somebody was doing the Roman version of a podcast back then, and. Uh, <laughs> You know, they're they're just like, all right, in today's news, uh, Caligula appointed a horse to Senate. And uh, someone else is like, but what about Rome's economy? Like, it's like, like, yeah, you know. But, Peter, I mean, forget about uh, Guantanamo. The two of us would be in the bronze bull at this point. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a good question. Where Where would we stand if we were doing this podcast in ancient Rome? Let's see. The bronze bull was actually Nero, and they threw it in the ocean as soon as he died. So, well, tell everybody. Uh, tell, with tell, 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 tell everybody what the bronze bull is, because I don't think everybody knows what what the bronze bull is. It's a giant statue. It's a life size statue of a bull that's hollow, made of bronze. And what they do is they put someone inside of it. For example, the person who made it to when. It, when Caligula said, I don't, I mean, when Nero said, I don't think it's uh, big enough for um, someone to fit in there. Get, get in it and prove me, prove to me that uh, someone can get in it. The guy who made it got in it, and then Nero shut the door behind him, locked it. And what you do is you put um, fire under it to superheat the bull. And as it heats up, it doesn't 
just cook the person inside of well it's not going to kill them because it cooks them though they will be cooking it um it burns up all the air inside of the bull so that they can't breathe but there's a trumpet attached to the mouth of the bull so the only air that the person can get is by sucking in through the horn and whenever they suck in through the horn it makes the bull go so as it heats up more and more you start to hear the bull moo and that means that the person is basically screaming their final breath right before they choke to death and die oh also you put like herbs and stuff around it so it smells sweet because otherwise you just smell human flesh cooking <laughs> i don't like this it just smells like burning human hair can we get some herbs and spices maybe maybe put some throw some kfc in there with him <laughs> make it make it smell better Oh my god, and that's uh, that actually, speaking of KFC, brings us to uh, the That's Cute news of the week. This is an adorable thing that happened uh, that was in the news lately. I'm, I'm waiting because I'm waiting to just shred this because I'm going to hate it. The ACLU is suing our president for separating immigrant parents from their children. Why is that? See, that that's cute because Trump's strongest attribute is the sheer number of lawsuits he has filed against him. He has so many lawsuits filed against him that if he lived to be a thousand years old, he wouldn't even be halfway through all the lawsuits he has pending right now. And if Colonel Sanders has anything to say about it, he's not going to live that long. Well, the thing is, is that you, you have to queue up if you sue him. You, you're going to be the last person to sue him. And he's already had thousands of lawsuits filed against him from whenever he was a crooked uh Real estate man, right? Businessman. Yeah, but the problem is he's just like three raccoons standing on top of each other in a business suit. Maybe. I just, I don't, oh my god, I don't know what it's going to take to like fix this, but I feel like anybody's like, we have to go by the rule of law. I'm like, it's being violated all over the place. If we don't follow the law, once again, we keep bringing up the yellow lines on the road. If you don't respect the, if we don't all believe that those yellow lines are separate lanes, then like the whole thing falls apart. Yeah, it's like I keep uh, texting Pete here. It's like, you know, the rule of law means nothing. Everybody into the Thunderdome. Yeah, then you also just randomly... I miss the days when you were just randomly texting me like, Witch Hunt! Like, that was my... <laughs> I, only, I only did that for like the next seven days after the president um, I know. tweeted that. That was my that was my favorite my favorite tweet from you. My favorite tweet from him uh, was just, Witch Hunt! Uh, I, yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll go back to texting it then, but I won't tell you when. Yeah, you know, I keep, it's, just it's, look for it. It's really funny, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, talk about a second. Uh, and if you haven't listened to it, God, go out and listen to it. Uh, I've been listening to this thing called Last Podcast on the Left, and uh, these guys are amazing. They're actually what inspired me to be like, "Wow, well, we got to make a podcast." Uh, yeah, and they cover all the most amazing like serial killers and alien abductions. And I keep listening to it, and going, "Maybe we could change the format from news to this." But then, like, I keep going back. They have like hundreds of episodes. I go, but they've covered everything and much funnier than we ever could. What uh, what inspired me to want to do a podcast is I've listened to every episode of Cox and Crandor in the morning, which is why I first called us Pat and Pete in the morning. I listened to every episode of the TGS podcast, Co Optional podcast, uh, Jim, or Podquisition with Jim Sterling, uh, Pin Sunday School, and probably some others I can't remember. I don't. Like... I listen to a lot of podcasts. I'm gonna which... throw sucks because i'm this bad at them after having that much <laughs> having heard that many examples of i'm gonna it, throw it out there that I, I love pin gillette but i don't like pin sunday school because like i don't like the, i don't like the other people i wish it was just no. pen I, like, i'm just like stop talking i want to hear more pen to be fair he talks like 99 percent of the time i know but it's just that after was... having heard all the episodes it's basically just him and occasionally someone in the background be like well you're right pen yeah it's, it's just a one percent just every time he's talking and then there's a break <laughs> and someone's like you're right pen. i'm like you shut up and let pen talk <laughs> oh um don't get your hopes up with uh josh shallon and mike b aka phony that's Maybe. another one uh, I would. I, I. I hope that one day the the last podcast guys uh, listen to our podcast. They also have some of the last podcast guys also have another podcast called Abe Lincoln's Top Hat, uh, which is also covers politics. And I'm like, well, they've done everything. They've done it all. They covered everything. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna try to live my life as a a, a, a B movie podcaster <laughs> or a C list podcaster. Yeah. 
I don't know. I'm really hoping that this takes off, and then we can just like have a Patreon and uh, live off live off this. That way, you can be sleeping at five in the afternoon, and it's not a big deal I, unless it's time to do our podcast. Oh my god, you don't listen to me! I don't like sleeping at five in the afternoon. I hate it. It's something <laughs> I have to do to stay alive. Like I don't want to go to sleep at five in the afternoon. That sucks. You know how bad it sucks to sleep off the last of the daylight during the winter months, and then go. Well, I guess I won't see the sun again. <laughs> I don't know. It's like... I, I mean, you're talking to a guy that used to sleep from uh, sun up to sun down like a vampire all the time. It took me most of my life to get to where I was sleeping at night. <laughs> you're, like, you're like the anti-Blade. Instead of like, you know, like Blade's like all of their powers, none of their weaknesses. You have like all the weaknesses of a human and all the problems of a vampire. Yes. You're just like, I, I can't go out in the sun. Uh, I have an unquenchable thirst. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Wild enough. The anti blade. I, although, I would love to. I have to an s- unquenchable thirst for coffee these days because I stopped smoking and stopped drinking sodas. I think that was now my. Now it's just like, well, I need something. So it's coffee. I think that was my problem this week was I used to sip black coffee all day, but the last few days I haven't, I haven't made uh, black sipping coffee. And so, like, I've just been like, I am so tired. And I feel like maybe it's because I'm not just drinking jet fuel all day. Actually, you're right. Fuck it. I'm going to make some coffee live on the air, ladies and gentlemen. I am going to make coffee. I don't see why that was necessary or why we had to talk about that. Uh, all right. Well, I guess we're uh, we're about at the end. Uh, is there anything else that you want to plug? Oh, God. I've already um, advertised every podcast I listen to. For a second, I thought you would actually left the podcast to go make coffee, and I'm just like, did this motherfucker just leave in the middle of a podcast, go into his kitchen, and is like, yep, let me go ahead and make coffee here. Oh, why? I didn't respond at first? Yeah, it was quiet for a second. I'm like, did he leave? Uh, <laughs> all right, so... Hold this, on, let, yeah. let, me, let me check back to my notes. Okay, we covered the dick pic. We covered... Um, he's mad at her. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I covered everything. All right, so let's go ahead and... Uh, we'll go ahead and wrap it here, guys. Uh, this has been another uh, episode of Those Muckrakers for this week. Uh, tune in uh, every Friday. We release it. We're on iTunes now, too. And I'm going to try to get us on Stitcher and all the other places that you listen to your podcast pretty soon. Feel free to tweet us. Where are they going to tweet us, Swaba? At those muckrakers. Uh, also, feel free to email us. Where are they going to email us? Because I'm still having trouble with this. Those muckrakers at gmail.com. So if you have suggestions for things you'd like to hear about or uh, suggestions for um, what Wilder should do with his life besides podcasting, uh, we'd be happy to hear them if you have suggestions for me on how I can get uh, more sleep in my life while still maintaining this level of amazing that I am. Uh, feel free to send <laughs> us too. Or if you just want to send us hate mail uh, because you can't stand us, we also would really, really enjoy that. We are, much like a dictator, are desperate for any kind of validation at all. Please love us. Please love Please. us. Find us on iTunes. Uh, leave us a comment. Give us a rating. And uh, that's your podcast for this week. I miss the days we talked about Peggy Bundy. 